This video will discuss the magnetic dipole of nuclei. Okay, so we're going to start by considering the following situation. We've got a charged particle, which could be a nucleus or a single proton. And this is in an orbit. Right now we're going to start by assuming that it is a fixed circular orbit. And it's orbiting around some axis of rotation, which I have marked as the z-axis here. So it would be rotating in the xy plane and it's going around some center point of this circle. All right, so what is the magnetic dipole in this case of this particular charged particle? So the magnetic dipole mu is equal to the electric current that it's creating by moving times the cross-sectional area of that orbit that it's in. So the electric current is equal to the total charge going through an area Per unit time. So that is equal to, so the time is going to be equal to uh, 2 pi times the radius, which is the circumference of the circle, divided by the velocity at which it travels. So 1 over time is going to be the velocity of our charged particle divided by the circumference of the circle, 2 pi r. And the area of the circle is going to be pi r squared, as is the area for all circles. So the magnetic dipole of our charged particle moving in a perfect circular orbit here is going to be, once we cancel out all these units here, substituting in the values for the current and the cross-sectional area, it's going to be 1 half times the charge of the particle times its velocity times the radius of our circular orbit. So that's for a fixed perfect circular orbit. Now in general, the magnetic dipole of a given charged particle is going to equal 1 half times its charge times what is called the cross product of its radius vector and its velocity vector. So what is this going to be? Well, the, rate, the cross product of the radius and velocity is equal to, because we have momentum, is equal to mass times velocity. So this is equal to 1 over mass times the cross product of the radius and momentum. And the cross product of radius and momentum is what is defined to be the angular momentum. So our magnetic dipole moment here is going to heavily involve our angular momentum. So once we substitute in all these values here, so we'd have uh, 1 half Q over M times L. So we have our magnetic dipole of our charged particle, now in any kind of arbitrary uh, rotation it likes, is equal to the charge of the particle over two times its mass times the angular momentum of that particle. Okay, so now we can go from uh, vectors to operators to try to start getting a, a feel for how this is going to work for us in quantum mechanics. How, it's going to, how our energies are going to be affected by magnetic fields and magnetic dipoles of these nuclei, as we're going to need in NMR. So that means our magnetic dipole operator now, going from the vector to the operator, is now going to equal, there's an extra constant that's going to show up, which is called the nuclear factor, generally going to be some integer which is dependent on whatever nucleus we have. Nuclear factor times the charge of the nucleus divided by 2 times the mass of the nucleus times the angular momentum operator, as we discussed in the previous video, which is equal to the nuclear factor times a new quantity called the nuclear magneton times our angular momentum operator, where our nuclear magneton is now defined as the charge of a nucleus divided by 2 times its mass. So for each nucleus, you know, whether it's uh, hydrogen 1, carbon 13, nitrogen 15, etc., they're all going to have a, a given value depending on their charge and their mass of this nuclear magneton. Then once we combine the nuclear magneton and the nuclear factor, those two combine to form what is called the magneto, magnetogyric ratio, so gamma times I. So the magnetogyric ratio is the value that combines, it, that relates our angular momentum of our charged particle to its magnetic dipole. So that magnetogyric ratio is going to be equal to the nuclear factor times the nuclear magneton 
time, which is also equal to the nuclear factor times charge of the nucleus divided by two times mass of the nucleus. So this is going to be important to us in subsequent videos because the magnetic moment of our, our nucleus is going to interact with an external magnetic field and that is going to allow some energy transitions to occur based on a specific frequency depending on this magnetic moment of our nucleus.